All right, I think this is on. Good God, okay, sorry. This video is actually gonna be on going to France, kind of why I'm leaving to France, and if you wanna to leave to France, what the process is gonna be like, but I have to say, <laughs> right off the bat, the place I'm in right now is my friend's place. I officially moved out of my old place as I'm preparing, uh, but it is, <laughs> I'm sweating more than a thought in church right now, <laughs> so if I get a nice glazed look, that is why. But anyway, yeah, I'm moving to France, haven't made too many YouTube videos. The reason for that is actually because YouTube emailed me saying they cut my recommendations to my channel from outside viewers viewing it by 70%, supplemented with the fact that they also cut my views. So sometimes I get thousands or several hundred views, they cut it down to like 50. So being somebody who's leaving, I was like, look, it's not worth doing that at the moment. I'd rather see friends and family before I leave. Also, I'm still plagued with uh, COVID after seven months. No, I didn't start with any underlying health conditions or anything like that. Just got the short end of the stick. Okay. So I'm leaving to France. The reason for that is for school. And even though that does not sound like a very particularly climatic reason, you just, just follow me on all this fucking shit that I had to go through in order to get there. Okay. So just follow me on this. So the reason why I originally went was because I wanted to get my PhD in the States, but the PhD program's closed because of a lack of funding as a result of COVID. So they told me, sorry, we can't do this. Maybe you can apply next year. Well, I'm having a quarter century crisis and as a result, I cannot do that. So I decided to apply for different programs in Europe, throughout Europe. So whether that would be, I think it was uh, Germany, France, some places in the Scandinavian countries as well. And France had the most prestigious of the schools there. So I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Paris. So I'm moving to Paris as a result of that. But I wanted to answer some of your guys' questions about what that would be like. So. First things first, what is the visa process like going as a student? So I'm gonna be going to get my master's in political science with a focus on Western security policy. Specifically, like why are we, you know, gang banging the rest of the world unnecessarily, thus causing more people to hate us, if that makes any sort of sense. And so as a result, I had to get a student visa. However, for France, in order to get a student visa, they only have like a couple locations that you can go across the States in order to get this visa. And so for me, I had to go to San Francisco, which from going from Portland, Oregon, all the way to San Francisco, that is, I think it was about like a 12 hour drive or so. And so I had to uh, go from a weekend with one of my friends, drive San Francisco. I submitted 50 pages of work showing like passports, uh, vaccination records, um, all sorts of crap that you have to do. School notifications saying that I, I applied, I got into it, I paid, and all these other things in between there. Supplemented with the fact that French are very, very good about being very, very late about everything. And so I did this, but the, the big kicker, kind of like an unconsensual kick to the back of the head, was that I was one page away from succeeding in this field. So I had to get 51 pages submitted, not 50 pages. And again, this is as a result of how long I have to be gone, because I'm not just being gone for a couple months, I'm being gone for a couple of years. So as a result of all of this, I had to go drive back, and then the following weekend I had to go drive 12 hours again to San Francisco, because I'm a you know broke bitch and we can't afford to fly everywhere. And so after back-to-back -back weekend trips to San Francisco, that worked out. Now you might be wondering too, how exactly does it work finding a house? Well, the French are really, really good about <laughs> making everything very inconveniencing, which I can't complain though, to be fair, because they're the ones who give me a great opportunity and I'm accepting it. So I'm very grateful to them for that. And also the program is in English as well. However, you need something called a French guarantor. And a guarantor is just a fancy way of saying cosigner. Well, if you don't know somebody in France who can be your French guarantor and they won't accept anybody outside of France, you have to get the French government, which is an old, the whole obstacle in of itself. Don't even get me started on that. There's like paperwork that they're asking for that you can't even get until you're physically in France, but you can't get to France without the, the guarantor or else you'd be homeless. So you have to find ways to kind of skate the system. But anyway. You have to get the government to be your guarantor, but a lot of apartments do not accept said government as the guarantor. And so then you're confronted with an issue where you cannot get anything anywhere. And so a lot of what we have to do is show up in France completely homeless, rent an Airbnb, and pray to whatever God that you believe in to try to get something in France 
before your school year starts. So a lot of us, sorry to hear that guy out there with this very loud motorcycle. So anyway, a lot of us are gonna have to show up two weeks early in order to find a place before school and hope to God it works out because Airbnbs can get a little expensive. Fortunately, I was, I was very uh, lucky because I had some Spaniard friends who were able to find a place and they were able to check out the place because Spain is not too far away from France and it worked out, thank, thank God. So anyway, hopefully that answers that. Next is tuition, how expensive or cheap is tuition? That really varies country to country and Germany is the best. They even have something called free university and if you don't want a transcript that says free university, all you do is you go to you go to a university in Germany that has a dual program to free university and so then you you get a dual program from say like uh, I'm going to make up a school like Humboldt University so you'll get Humboldt University get a dual program with free university and so you have reduced tuition supplemented with a transcript that does not say free university outside of Germany France is a lot better. They're not great. The tuition is probably about half of what it would cost in the States, but half is still like $40,000. So obviously you're still gonna have that massive financial hit, but there are other ways as well. There's a lot of people who are outside of the US who are part of the EU and they only pay $4,000, but because we are America and they do not give us, uh, that's what I'm looking for. They don't give us any sort of discounts we're stuck in the situation that we are. So outside of EU, you're kind of presented with the situation unless you get a lot of scholarships which are available and you actually, it's funny, in America, you have to apply for a school and then apply for scholarships. In Europe, you do, in a lot of these countries, you do it all at once. So you apply for, a, you say, yes, I wanna do this scholarship and yes, I wanna to go to the school and it's all one big application. So when you submit your school application, it gets submitted to all these different scholarships as well, which is very helpful if you actually prefer to have a life. Um, so let's see here. Oh, and by the way, the UK is the worst. I think the UK, like Britain, like the schools in like London, they're about the same tuition prices as the States, roughly. Next, will I come back? Yeah, yeah, I would say I would come back. Obviously, you have like healthcare in the US that's pretty jacked up. Healthcare in France, obviously, you do need to, you, it's kind of a, a hard thing because you have to enroll in the French healthcare system in order to get premium things. You also can enroll in private healthcare system as well. And I haven't completely figured it all out. So there's obviously a lot of things that are wrong with the US that, for example, medical bills are the biggest cause of bankruptcy. But, you know, the US is kind of my home. And would I completely say no to living in Europe forever? No, definitely not. But I don't actually plan on staying gone and also, for some of you guys who have lost a lot of people in your life, uh, whether it be to like suicide or other types of causes of death, it's kind of hard to leave people sometimes and it's better to kind of piece everything up, right? It's like you see a demon and it's like seven feet tall. It looks pretty intimidating. But if you just focus on its arm, it's a little less intimidating than the whole body. And if you can't do that, then you focus on its hand. And if you can't do that, you focus on its finger. And if you can't do that, you focus on its fingernail. I'm sure its fingernail is gonna be a lot less intimidating, or excuse me, yeah, a lot less intimidating than its whole body, if that makes any sense. Similar to like going, for me, going to other countries as well. It's pretty intimidating going off and doing these things, particularly during a pandemic. And whether I stay gone or not is, you know, that's one thing, but thinking that I'll be back, specifically on the big holidays like Christmases and summers and things like that, um, that helps with the process a lot. But anyway, uh, I'm not a big traveler. I'm doing it for school. Um, I am very nervous. Uh, there's a lot of anxiety, particularly with people who overthink things like myself, but I think it's important to kind of face those concepts, those issues, and you just fight through it personally. And I'm not trying to talk as like some extra wise ass bitch over here. Like, oh yeah, you know, I don't know, insert whatever you want to say. Uh, cause I'm obviously, <laughs> I'm not a role model. I don't do enough good decisions to, <laughs> to be that. But I'm just saying is I think people got to push through some stuff and that's what we're doing. Anyway, thank you.